Alright, so I just want to help you build a maze here in SketchUp. I'll assume you've logged in. You can see I've used my education account, which allows a few free or added features that are really helpful. One specifically that I will use is to add textures and then export those textures, which um, allows us to have colorful uh, walkthroughs in VR and things like that. To start with here then, this person, I want to get this model out of here. If you've never used SketchUp before, we have selecting, erasing, line tool. This is the paint, obvious. This is from like most paint programs where you paint things. Arcs, rectangles. In fact, this is the shape menu. So when I click on any of these ones with a little arrow on it, we actually get multiple items showing up, extra options that we can choose. And some of them show up over on the right hand side that are within these menus over here. As a starting point, I want to get rid of this individual. Now, you can choose the Select tool, and then come back and click on him. The other way to get to the Select tool is the largest key on the keyboard, so using keyboard shortcuts can be really time-saving. Pressing the spacebar would do that. Then I can click on this person, and now I can press the Delete key, the Backspace key, or I can right-click, and I can choose the Trash button here. Depends what you have available to you. Using the keyboard shortcuts will always save you time once you get a little bit used to them. But until then, you feel free to use the graphical interface. So if I want to make a maze, I'm going to grab the rectangle. Now, a lot of these tools, the keyboard shortcut is the first letter of the tool you're thinking of. So I want to make a rectangle. I'm going to push the letter R, and you can see that my cursor changes. And now I have a pencil with a rectangle under it. I can also see that it's kind of a bluish color, so that means it's perpendicular to this blue axis. Pretty helpful. If I ever want to change orientation of anything I'm working with and force it to be one of these three directions, I have the arrow keys on my keyboard. I can choose left arrow to make it so that it's perpendicular to the blue axis, right arrow perpendicular to the red axis, and up perpendicular to the blue axis, and it forces it into that direction pushing it the same direction I previously pushed. So if I pushed up before, it makes it blue. I push it one more time, it now is free to be flat on whatever surface is available. I'm going to choose the origin. It's a great place to start, and then just start dragging now. When I did this, I didn't click and then drag it and then release. I do a click, drag, click for most tools. There's only one that you may want to use the click and drag and release. So to show that again, I'm just going to press Escape to get out of this tool. And I'm going to go to this, the origin. I'm going to click. I'm going to drag. And then while I'm dragging, if I leave my mouse alone, I can either click now or I can start typing immediately or type immediately after. I don't have to click into a spot. So you can see down here we're working in feet. I'm going to change that in a minute. But for now, I'm going to drag this out. Stop moving and just start typing. So let's say I'd like to have my maze to be 30 meters, so 30m, comma, 30m. Now, I did not have to click in that box in the top right-hand corner for it to start showing up. I did a click to start the rectangle. I dragged outwards to show SketchUp which way I'd like the rectangle to go. And then I just started typing. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to click on a box or anything like that. I just start typing. I typed in 30m to tell it it's 30 meters, a comma for the second dimension, and then 30m. Now if I hit enter, the box immediately goes to that size. Super helpful. Now, I actually want to see this whole thing. So there's a few navigation tools that are helpful. The middle mouse wheel, if you have a mouse, is super helpful. So you can roll that mouse in and out. I think this is a two-finger slide on a trackpad. I can hold that middle mouse wheel down and I'll rotate around my axis. And if I hold down shift while I'm pushing down on the middle mouse wheel, I get the pan tool, which allows me to slide it. Now these tools are available in the bottom of your menu over here if you're uncomfortable with those. You can always go get it drag, go back, click again, go get the rot rotate tool, and you can just use your left click to do all of these functions. But if you get used to 
using that middle mouse wheel to go in and out, rolling, holding down middle mouse wheel to rotate, and holding down middle mouse wheel and holding down shift at the same time, panning, you're going to get a whole lot faster. Now, first thing I'd like to do is give this floor some thickness. It's always important to make sure the floor is a little bit thick so that if there's any problems, you have a good uh, base, especially when you bring it into other programs because sometimes they think the white side is the only side that's visible and the other side is sort of an invisible like back like a one-way mirror where this side you could see and this side is not there. So it's important to have everything have some dimension to it. So I'm going to push the letter P for push-pull, or I can click on this icon over on the left. Now whenever I move it over top of a surface, it will turn into a bunch of little dots. That tells me that's the surface I'm going to work with. I left-click once, drag it where I want it to be, and then click again. I noticed again that I'm still in Imperial Unit, so let's change that. Uh, you could either change it when you first come in, you could choose the correct template, or over here where it says Model Info, it looks like a SketchUp icon with an I next to it. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to choose, make sure I'm in Model Info. If I have to scroll down, I will. And choose it to be in, let's say, meters. That's what I'd like to work with. A couple of decimal places is fine. You decide. And length snapping, uh, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to let it be sort of like analog, or I can be at any dimension I want. Then I can close that back off. Now, to make a maze, the next tool we're going to look at using is called the offset tool. So that is in this push pull menu, and it's this bottom one. Now, this one doesn't start with the letter O, it starts with the letter, it uses the letter, it does start with the letter O, but that's not the keyboard shortcut, it's the letter F. So I'm going to choose and push F, and I'm going to get my offset tool. I'm going to see that it's this dotted surface I want to work with, so I'm going to click. I'm just going to drag inwards, and a reasonable thickness for the outer edge of my maze might be, let's say, half a meter. So I'll type in 0 0.5. Now I can type in M and hit enter, and that works, but because I changed my units to meters, I don't have to put the M, but I can if I want, and then hit enter. Remember, start moving, and then go and type, and then hit enter. All right, so now I've got a wall thickness for the outside. Now I need a pathway thickness. Now notice it clicked and it didn't quite catch for me, but I can still type in my dimension that I would like it to be right now. So I'm going to type in, let's say, 2 meters, and hit enter, and see it still changes. So it's okay if it doesn't quite move the way you want it to start with. You can still type in your dimension. Next, I'm going to move in from here, probably half a meter, 0 0.5. And this inside, I'm going to do 2 meters. So I'm still working in the same tool. I don't have to keep changing tools. 0 0.5. So I'm just making kind of a concentric uh, maze, if you want to call it something like that. 2 meters for this one, and this last one I'm just going to go 0 0.5. So I've got a basic maze right here, and now I'd like to create some walls and such. The simplest way to do that, uh, to add some, um, some divisions, some separation, things like that, is to use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to make this front part where my hole is that we can enter, my enter area. So I'll click on one part of the line, drag over, and then I'll move across. You can see I'm going from one line, starting, and then to the other outside edge. And now for this one only, I'm going to erase just the inside line. I'll show you why. If I hit this outside edge, it takes away the whole surface, because we no longer have a complete bounded surface edge, and so it takes away the surface. It's not that helpful, so I'm going to control Z that. That's uh, to undo. You can also use these undo buttons down here if you don't have access to your keyboard. So now my person could walk in through here, and I'll show you this by using the push-pull tool. I'm going to undo this, but you can see how it works. I push-pull this up, maybe let's say three meters. You can see now that I have some walls that are bounding this area. I'm going to press Control Z because what I would like to do is to create a new, another rectangle. Let's say I don't. Let's say I want them to come in 
follow this path, but if they get over here, there's a there's something stopping them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle from there over to this edge. Doesn't matter the thickness, you decide how you want it to look. And then I'm going to use my eraser tool. So eraser starts with the letter E, turns into eraser. Now I click and drag until that line turns blue and then let go. Same here, click and drag until it turns blue and then let go. Now when I push pull, so letter P, turns dotted to now I selected it, click, start dragging upwards, maybe my walls can be four meters, and now I've got two sets of walls that have been raised. Super helpful. So I'm going to control Z that though, I don't want that right now, I'm just showing you that. Now I need another area for them to get into. Let's say they go in here, I make them go all the way over to, how about just this spot right here? I'm going to make another gap in the wall by just using my rectangle tool, clicking one line, going to the other side, clicking again, erase those two lines this time. So letter E for erase, click and drag to make them blue and then release. And now I'm not going to make it too difficult. I'm just going to keep it really simple. Erase and rectangle. Maybe I'll make them come over to here. You, can, you know the process now. So drawing a rectangle. And I'd like to raise it all at once. So maybe I will, on this area, make a block in the pathway. And I'll erase the two ends. So it's continuous. Um, they have to come this way. Maybe I'll make them go all the way around for this section over here. I'll erase these two end pieces. And then it should all, I think I got it, if I push pull, I can see that all of the sections are dotted, so now I can push pull. And I can go up to, let's say, four meters. And now I've got a nice tall maze that can be exported and imported into Sketchfab. Now let's just do a couple of things to make this look neat. For myself, I kind of like the look of uh, like a gravel ground and like uh, bushes for the the uh, walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the paint bucket and I'm going to go look for, let's see, landscaping and fencing and vegetation. How about like a gravel for the ground? So I'll click on that. Gives me kind of a gravel look. If I get real close when I'm actually standing there, it'll look a little bit like rock, so that's good. And then vegetation. How about this one maybe looks like bushes? Yeah, that's pretty good. So I can go around and click all of those surfaces, turn them all the color that I want them to be. Now, there is a slightly faster way to do this, but I don't want to make things confusing, so I'm going to just leave it as you can go around and click all of them. Just going to finish up here real quick. I think you get the picture. You can go ahead and do this or not as you choose. It's kind of fun when you're in the maze then to feel like you're kind of inside of a a natural maze that may be somewhere out in the world. Uh, interestingly, I have created some of the mazes around the world that are somewhat famous and put them into a place for students to be able to, to walk through, which is kind of fun, but it's really confusing because they've spent more time than I have, obviously, on their mazes once they're in the real world. All right, so there's a pretty good look, ready to be exported, and I'll do that in the next video. All right. Oh, I forgot. One quick thing. You want to save this. So um, you can choose Save up here. Now, if you have a school account, you can synchronize with Google Drive. If you don't, then you're going to have to um, just save it in the account that you have with SketchUp. Um, yeah, if I want to choose to save this, I want to click Save. Now, this is with the, the education accounts. And I can say Maze. Um, I'll just call it Simple Maze. You know, you can give it whatever you want. You can put your last name on there or something like that. It doesn't really matter. And then with a thin SketchUp, it's going to try to save it to my Google Drive because that's linked because that's how I logged in. So in here, I can quickly... Well, it takes a second to synchronize up with Google Drive. And I'll just choose the folder. And... 
Uh, one quick thing that's helpful is to to know that you only click on the folder. Don't double click it or don't go into it. Just click the folder you want to be saved in and then hit select and it will save it into that folder. So now my, my uh, maze is saved. All right, I'll show exporting and moving it into Sketchfab in the next video.